Uh, he knows whether this is the time or, or it's not the time, but I'll tell you this. Even if it's not the time that we get right into the end times, even if it's not that time, it's time for us to wake up and get busy for the Lord. It's time for us to get serious in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's why I've been preaching and teaching on these kind of things um, really all year, but um, for certainly uh, as we've progressed more and more. So I want to, uh, again, share something with you tonight that I hope will be a challenge and a help to you uh, in uh, Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, uh, I want to look at the 11, first 11 verses, and Lord willing, next week I will probably start preaching from verse 12 and move on from there. And um, tonight I want to share some thoughts with you about this major problem that we have today, which is a lack of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You say, well, there's a lot of very smart people in the world. Well, they're, they're smart in a lot of things other than things that are important. All right? And what I mean is we need knowledge of God and God's word and God's will and what God is doing and wants to do. We need understanding of, of this from a, from a spiritual perspective, from a God perspective, so that we can have the wisdom that we need and, and so that we can respond correctly and prepare ourselves as we need to. So that's what I want to talk to you about tonight, starting in Proverbs chapter 2, verse number 1. And if you have the strength and ability to do so, we'll stand. Um, it says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Again, all of this revolves around this truth. We need to have a proper view and understanding and relationship with the Lord. And here we see the fear of the Lord. All of this has to do with uh, receiving and understanding the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Now we, we can be thankful tonight that we have a God watching out for his people. By the way, it says, the, preserveth the way of his saints. If you're not one of his saved, chosen believers, he's not going to preserve you, and you can't blame him if he doesn't. Verse 9 says, Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. And you can't understand any of that without a right relationship with him. It says, When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, then discretion shall preserve thee, and understanding shall keep thee. Father, I want to thank you for the day. Thank you for your love, your mercy, and thank you for your word tonight that you've given us so that we might be prepared, that we might have the, the, the means, the tools, the resources to be prepared for the evil day that is yet coming. We ask for your blessing and your help tonight. I pray that you'd intercede in our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Um. I was asked recently if I would prepare and, and, and share, teach, preach on the book of Revelation. And I'm still praying about that. I'm, I'm leaning towards it, not away from it. But nonetheless, I will say this. The book of Revelation means nothing if we aren't paying attention tonight to the book of Proverbs. And what I mean is, to, the book of Revelations deals with everything that's going to be in the future. But by the time the book of Revelations happens, you had better been right with all the rest of this. 
Otherwise, none of that's going to matter to you, right? And the truth of the matter is, if you're right with the rest of this, none of the rest of it will matter to you either because you're not going to be here. You're going to be somewhere else. And you'll have a better, more perfect knowledge of what's going to happen then than you, than you will by listening to me talk about the book of Re uh, Revelation. Now, uh, you might say, well, it's pointless then for you to talk about it. Well, no, not necessarily, because he gave us that so that we would have some understanding and so that we would be challenged, we'd be taught, we'd be encouraged to be prepared, that we might have hope. I want you to notice as, as at the end of verse 11 there, or the beginning of verse 11, I should say, at the end of this passage, he says, discretion shall preserve thee. Now, discretion is the ability. It's, it's, it's essentially wisdom. It's being able to see the difference, right from wrong, good from bad, righteousness from unrighteousness, to be able to discern what the truth is. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Now, I have a question for you. I want you to think about this. Actually, I have a couple questions. How many times in your life have you had some kind of experience, some kind of situation that just occurred, and you said to yourself, man, I wish I'd have, I wish I'd have known what I know now before that. Well, I could have avoided some really bad situations if I'd have just known what I know now before that happened. Right? Lots of times. Yes, as, as we get older, and it's going to rack up times, right? We look back and we go, man, if I'd have just known the truth, if I'd have known certain facts and details, I would have made different choices. I would have approached this in a different way and likely had a different outcome, right? How many times have you wished you could go back and change Make a different choice and hope for a different, better outcome. You know, they say hindsight is what? 2020. And you know, I'm not going to disagree with that thought, that premise. But what good does that do us? All right, you've already experienced, you've already gone through it, it's already happened. And yeah, you can look back and say, oh yeah, yeah, I see where I messed up. Or I see where the situation went wrong. But in almost every situation, there's really no way to go back and undo and fix. You know, sometimes you can bandage it up and sometimes you can kind of salvage the situation, but it's never going to be the same, Right? After the glass is broken, it's broken. You know, glue it together if you must, but it's, it's you know, the vase is now worthless. The truth is, what, what we need to see and understand tonight is that God's foresight is better than 2020 vision in hindsight. You understand what I'm saying? With God's help, if we can be prepared and have His understanding, His knowledge, and His wisdom before, then we, we're better than 2020 vision looking back because now we're looking back going, yes, I avoided that situation. Praise God, I didn't have to go through that situation, right? We need knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And maybe the saddest thought about this whole thing is this. There's much more knowledge, understanding, and wisdom available to us than most of us get hold of. It's not that we didn't have access a lot of times to the information that could have helped us to avoid this situation. The real tragedy is we didn't avail ourselves of the information, and that's the big heartbreak and heartburn for us, is that maybe somebody tried to tell us that this is the way it was. Or maybe it was God's Word that uh, held the key, and we, if we'd have just known what it said, we wouldn't have gone that way or done that thing. I've seen this tragedy occur 
in the pages of the Word of God. For example, in Mark chapter 12, verse 34, Jesus Christ, they're dealing with a group of, of people, a group of men. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Listen, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus said to this fellow. You are not far from the kingdom of God. What if somebody told you, you're not far from the kingdom of God? Have you ever played hide-and-seek? Anybody ever played hide-and-seek? Have you ever played the, the hide-and-seek where if it, you know, there's somebody kind of watching over the whole thing and they know where whatever's hiding and they might say, you're getting warmer. Oh, you're getting colder. Right? My mom and dad used to play that game with us all the time. They'd hide our gifts and, and, and then they'd say, all right, well, it's in the house somewhere. And then they'd sit in the chair drinking coffee and say, well, you're getting colder. And then you'd head back toward the kitchen or whatever. You, well, you're getting a little warmer now. Well, you're burning up. You're about to catch fire. What I see, what I understand when I'm reading this statement from Jesus is he's telling this guy, you're about to catch fire. You're so close to the kingdom of heaven. You're just right there. But listen to what happens. It says, and no man ask, after that, Dursk ask him any questions. Think about that for a moment. Here you have a group of guys. They're standing around talking to Jesus. He's sharing things with them. And he turns to them and he says, you're, you're, you're right there close to the kingdom of heaven. And they just stop asking questions. They just stop seeking. Like being close is good enough. But I'm telling you, being close is not good enough. We need to understand this stuff, right? James 1.5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Think about this. That giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not. He doesn't hold back. And it shall be given him. But you notice with that statement, he says, if you lack wisdom, first of all, you have to acknowledge that you do. Somebody was, I was talking to somebody in public this week, earlier this week, um, and, they, and they was talking about, that what they were talking about was the whole COVID thing. Saying, well, some of those doctors and some of those scientists pretended like they knew what was really going on and what the right answer was. He said the only thing was they didn't want to acknowledge that they didn't know the truth and they didn't understand it, and they wanted everybody to think they did. So they told us this is the pro uh, thing we need to do, and this is how we need to do this, and, and it wasn't right. And I said, you know, the truth of the matter is, I don't know turns out to be the right answer more times than not. And if we just humble ourselves and say, you know what? I don't know. I don't know, but I, I want to find out. It turns out to be the better answer most of the time. God says, if you lack wisdom, he says, ask me. And I'll give it to you. And I won't hold it back. The sad truth is we have access to enough knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to get us through any circumstance or situation. And the reason we end up falling on our face and end up with egg on our face is because we don't. We don't acknowledge we don't have it. And we don't ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We don't seek it. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that tonight. I want you to notice, first of all, First of all, what is it? I want to define the terms for you tonight a little bit. The word knowledge, as is used in Proverbs chapter 2, means to be aware. I say, well, that's deep, preacher. I'm sure I could have figured that out. Well, maybe. But the Webster's 1828 has it this way, a clear and certain perception of that which exists, the truth or the fact. You know what that reveals? 
Most of the time, we think we know what the truth is. We think we know what the facts are. But oftentimes, as we've already admitted, the facts weren't the facts. And the reason, as I was having a conversation with another fellow this week, is sometimes we get to looking at a situation and understand we all have different backgrounds. We have different levels of understanding, right? I have a whole lot more experience than any of you boys on the front row. Did you realize that? I've got a lot of experiences that you, and the, the truth of the matter is, you may never experience what I've experienced in my life. And in some cases, I really hope you don't. But the reality is, you have experiences in your life already that I don't have. Right? You were raised by different parents than me. Right? You have a different understanding and education that I had. And so from that understanding, you're looking at something, and I'm looking at something, and you see one thing, and I see another thing. And some of it is my experiences, and some of it is my education, some of it's my background and who raised me, and all those different factors. And when I look at something and it doesn't make sense to me, there's a very distinct and real possibility that not only does God know differently, but somebody else may as well. But we try to look smart. I don't want to let on. You know, I, you asked me a question. I don't want to tell you I don't know because that makes me look dumb. But sometimes the reality is I just don't know. Or like one guy told me this week, he goes, I thought I didn't know once, but it turns out I was mistaken. Knowledge is to be aware, to have a clear and certain perception of that which exists or is truth. Understanding, the word understanding here is intelligence uh, or reason. And according to Webster's 1828, it means comprehending or apprehending the idea or sense of another. In other words, you look at a situation given the facts and what you see is the truth, and then you have to make a, uh, an understanding or you, you, you put the pieces together until you think you figured the puzzle out. Well, guess what? Sometimes we put the puzzle together wrong, right? That's why we need God's help. And the word wisdom is skillful. And in 1828, the definition was the right use or exercise of knowledge. So you see how these things build on one another, right? If you have the knowledge, all the truth and the correct truth, the right facts, and then you have to have understanding to build on those facts and put them together in a way that you have a complete, uh, full understanding of what that really is, and then you have to have the wisdom to know what to do with that. So you see, all of these build together, and God is the one that helps us to be able to do that. So how can we get it? How can we have knowledge, understanding, and wisdom? I want to point you back to the text tonight, and I want you to notice in the first several verses here, there's a, a, a key word that shows up three different times. Are you ready? Have your pencil in hand because this is a key word. This is important. My son, there it is, if. One of the biggest words in the Bible. If thou receive my words. <laughs> Truth is, it's your choices whether you do or not, just like I preached on Sunday. And hide my commandments with thee so that thou incline thine ear into wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Notice verse 3. If, yea, if thou criest after knowledge uh, and liftest up thy voice for understanding. Notice again verse 4. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as hid treasures, then, then, not before, then thou shalt uh, shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God? Do you know if, you, if, if the ifs aren't positive, you'll never get to the then? If you don't respond correctly to the if, you'll never get to the then. 
you'll be kicked out of the equation. You can't proceed unless you approach the if and end up on the right side of it. Notice, first of all, he says, my son, if thou wilt receive my words. I want you to notice that there is a desire indicated in that, in that uh, if statement. You have to want it, right? If thou wilt receive my word. And notice, if you hide my commandments with you. If my commandments and my instructions are so important that you're carrying them on along in life, and, and they're important to you, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. If we're going to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, we must receive the words of knowledge, understanding, and wisdom from God. If we will not listen, if we will not hear, if we do not incline our ears to him, we can't have it. We're excluded from having it. We're prevented from having it. We can't get it. Okay? If we will not listen, we will never learn. Doesn't that how it works in your class, Brother Wayne? Yeah. If they don't listen, they're not going to learn. And you know automatically, just day by day, which ones are going to pass and which ones are going to fail. Unless they cheat, of course. But you know whether they're paying attention or not, and you can discern that. Hey, listen, if they're not going to listen, listen, to do that, we must incline our ears to the truth. And that word incline is the opposite of recline or decline. People who do not wish to learn in class, they often lean back. They drift off mentally or even physically. My kindergarten teacher wrote a note on my report card. He said, Jim, Jim would do a whole lot better if he wasn't daydreaming so often. My mom saved that for me. It turned out to be a very, very wise thing that the teacher wrote there. The ones who learn are leaning in to hear what the teacher is saying and taking notes. Those are the ones that are going to pass. Those are the ones that are going to get the knowledge, the understanding, and the wisdom. Those are the ones that are going to pass the test. Those are the ones that are going to go on and do well. But we must also apply our hearts to truth, it says. This is not... You get, I understand something. We're not talking about useless facts here that make no difference in the future. God has very carefully chosen every word in this book. Do you realize that He didn't write this for His benefit? You realize that? He wrote it for your benefit. He wrote it so you would know what was going to happen, and so you would know how to response, respond to the things that do happen and have happened and are happening. But we have to apply our heart to it. That means we have to desire to understand it and to have the knowledge of it so that we can have the wisdom to apply it to our lives. So the first thing, the fir first thing we see here is it's got to be desired. The second truth that I see here is that it must be sought. Look at the next couple of verses, verse 3. He says, yea, if thou criest after knowledge. Do you see there the, the seeking, the, the hunting down that is being done in that passage? If thou criest after knowledge, if thou list, lifted up thy voice for understanding, notice if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as hid treasure, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Notice there's a desire there, but there's a seeking. Have you ever, have you ever heard someone say, boy, I wish I had a hamburger? Well, I wish I had some ice cream. Boy, I sure wish I had whatever. 
sometimes these days I hear people say, boy, I, should, uh, I wish I had a job. And I start scratching my head. What do you mean you wish you had a job? Well, yeah, I just wish I had a job. You know, I need a job. You know, you, you could walk to any establishment that I know of and probably get a job. Unless you've already had a job there. <laughs> and then they may not want to hire you. Somebody told me not long ago, nobody in Perryville will hire me. Well, that's, there's probably a reason for that. It's not that there's no jobs, right? That's not what it is, right? You may not be a good person to fit in the team. That's another matter. But there are jobs. But he says you have to search for it right? You have to get out. You know, I wish I had a job. Well, how many applications have you filled out? Well, none. How many places have you gone? Well, none. How many jobs have you asked for? Well, not none. Well, I guess I know about when you're going to get one. Never, right? In order to have knowledge and understanding and wisdom, there has to be a desire so that we seek for them. Notice, it says, Christ after. That means to call out for or call out to. You have to communicate that you want it. He says, then lift us up thy voice. You have to communicate. God, I need to understand you. I need to know what you have here. I need to understand that. If we're going to have knowledge and understanding and wisdom, we're going to have to communicate and interact with the person or the people who have that. We're going to have to seek and to search for it as if it were important, yea, even valuable. The word seek there in this passage means to go after. And you're going to have to go after. You're going to have to go after it harder than you go after your hamburger or your job or whatever else if you really want, if you're seeking after it. You're searching for it. He uses the word search here. That means to examine by inspection. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I preach and I teach and I challenge people all the time. You need to read, read the Bible every day. You need to read the Bible every day. You know that? You've, you've heard me say that before. You really ought to be reading the Bible every single day. You ought to be marking in it. You ought to have a notebook and you ought to have, take some notes uh, on what you're reading there. You ought to be getting into this book every day. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not, don't have a pen in hand, you don't have a notepad, you don't have, you're not taking any notes, you're, you're not, you know, sometimes people try to speed read the Bible. All right, God, you got five minutes. No, 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 that's not going to work. You know, there used to be gold miners. And, you know, you see the pictures of these guys, and they would, they would get their pan, and they would get their sleuth, that's the little washboard device, that they would, and they'd, they'd uh, scoop up a bunch of dirt out of the creek, and they'd stand there with their sleuth, and they'd shake it out, and they'd shake and shake and shake until there was just crumbs left in the bottom, and then be all the kind of excited because there's one little, one little fleck in the bottom of that. And then they'd get that out and put it aside, and they'd get back in there and dig them another thing of dirt. Down in Honduras, Brother Richie took me up on the mountain. He said, Brother Kiefer, that's a gold mine right there. I said, wow, that's interesting. He goes, yeah, I know the guy that uh, owns that or, you know, doesn't own the property, but he owns the mining part. I said, really? I said, that's interesting. I said, what, what are all these sacks out here by the side of the road? He goes, that's the, the, the dirt out of the mine that has to go to be processed. I said, he leaves his, he goes down there and digs up the dirt, and he puts it here in the sack and, and sets it by the side of the road where anybody could just steal it? He goes, nobody's going to steal that. There may be even some gold in there, but that involves too much work for him to steal the bag of dirt to go in there and find gold in it. Nobody's going to take that. Huh. They must not want gold very bad. 
how bad do we want knowledge, understanding, wisdom? God said it's there, but you're going to have to seek for it. You're going to have to incline your ear to it. You're going to have to dig in, and you're going to have to really meditate and strive to understand, God, what does this mean? Communicating with God and talking with God, and, hel and God, help me to understand what this is all about. So again, first of all, we need to desire it. And second of all, <clears throat> second of all, we need to seek for it. And thirdly, we need to understand where we're going to get it from. Where are we going to get knowledge, understanding, and wisdom? Yeah, again, there's a lot of smart people in the world, and I, I'm not going to take anything from them. But I'm going to tell you something tonight. I know somebody smarter than all the people in the world. In fact, if you could take every human being that's ever lived or ever will live, you add all of their knowledge up and stack it one on top of the other, the guy I know knows more than everything everybody else knows. Because the guy I know created it all. And he, know how, he knows how it all works. Because he created it. Y'all know who I'm talking about, don't you? Look at verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom... Out of his mouth cometh un knowledge and understanding. Isn't that what we're looking for? He layeth up sound wisdom. Isn't that what we're looking for? For the righteous. By the way, if that's not you, you're not going to get any of it. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. That's protection. Um, he keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Hmm. It's the Lord that gives wisdom. All the truth, all the knowledge, all the understanding and wisdom originate from God. If you get some from somebody else, that's okay, but it's watered down. I just want you to know that. Every truth I give you is a watered down version of what God says, right? Now, you won't hear many of us preachers claim that what, our, what we're preaching is watered down. But when you compare anything that any of us say with what God said, I'm telling you, it's watered down. He knows more than all the rest of creation knows. In fact, Psalm 25, verses 8 and 9, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. See, it all originates with God. It all comes from God. So what am I telling you tonight? We need knowledge. We need understanding. We need wisdom. But you've got to understand something tonight. You can get some from me, but if you really want it, you're going to have to get it from him means you're going to have to get into his book, right? His word, what comes out of his mouth was his word. And that's where all the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding originates. I want you to turn with me to the book of Psalms 119. Psalm 119, longest chapter in the Bible. If you're playing Bible trivia, you, that, that'll help you somewhere along the way. <clears throat> Psalm 119, and I want to call your attention starting at verse number 97. I was just going to give you one verse, but wow, this is a good passage. Psalm 119, starting at verse 97. The psalmist writes, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation 
all the day. Notice it doesn't say in the morning. I think about it for 10 or 15 minutes every morning. That's not what it says. He said, I love your law, so I think about it all day. Verse 98, that, though, thou, uh, though thou through thy commandments, I'll get this right, thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies. How many of y'all want to be wiser than your enemies? Does that sound like a good idea? I mean, when you say it like that, you're thinking, man, everybody ought to want to do that, right? Well, he told you right there how you could be wiser than your enemies. It's his word, right? Thou ha through, thy, uh, through thy commandments, thou hast, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. Not, you, you could say, well, he's talking about his enemies. Well, that could be. But his words ought to be with you. His commandments ought to be ever present with you, right? Uh, we, we go all the way back in the Bible, and you should keep them as frontlets before thine eyes. Boy, if we'd have applied that right from the beginning, we'd be in a different, a whole different world, I expect, right now. Verse 99. Not only do I know more than my enemies, look at this. I have more understanding than all my teachers. Fellas, how would you like to be more understanding than all of your teachers. Young ladies, wouldn't it be a blessing if you'd go to school and you knew more than all of your teachers did? Doesn't that sound interesting? Man, that's fascinating. Do you realize you can? You can. Through this book right here. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies, what God has said, his testimonies are my meditation. Verse 100, I understand more than the ancients. I know more and, and, I, I, and I'm aware more, I understand more than anyone that was before me. Do you know that's possible tonight? You realize you can know more than Moses did? Think about that. That's what it says. You can understand more than anyone before you. All you got to do is dig the gold out of the mine. All you got to do is search for it and seek it as hid treasure. And you can have more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding than anyone before you, than your teachers, including your preacher. Verse 101, I have refrained my feet from every evil way. Why and how? He tells you the answer. That I might keep thy word. Listen, when you're following God's word, and you're using God's word to direct your steps... You're going to avoid every evil way. All of those things you wished you hadn't have done or hadn't have gotten involved with or mistakes you hadn't made. He said, if you would just be following this book, none of those things would have happened. Verse 102, I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Now, I know I've talked to a lot of people, and most people would not say that about the Word of God. Oh, it's dry, it's boring, it's like chewing on brand cereal. Anybody like shredded wheat? Oh, yeah, some, some of y'all just crazy. I got some honey for you. That will help. <laughs> Yikes. Might as well just take a bale of hay and put it in the bowl and pour milk over it. It's all I got to say. I got a round bale. I got pretty cheap, I can sell you. It'd probably be just as good, maybe better. <laughs> How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. 
He says, 104, though thy priest, through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. And here's the, the verse that I really wanted to share with you, and I read all that to get to this. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Right there. All the knowledge and wisdom, understanding that you need. All bound up, nicely packaged, waiting for you to get it, dig into it, consume it, and allow it to consume you. And yet how many of us, how many of us, myself included, we dig in and chomp down and search out and look up all kinds of other stuff. Well, this is laid aside, collecting dust. Let's stand together tonight. Like I said, next week, I'm, I've already gotten an outline. I'm already ready to share with you. Got the next point right here in front of me. Why do we need knowledge, understanding, and wisdom? What, what's that all about? Why do we need that? Why is it so important? Why should we dig it out? Why should we seek it out, search it out? Why should we spend our time looking for it and desiring it and asking for it and talking about it? Somebody asked me recently, in fact, a phone rang, I don't remember what it was, Sunday afternoon, I think. Somebody said, um, is this Harlem Baptist Church? It is. I've got this pamphlet, somebody left it on my door, and uh, I'm interested and in just wondering uh, what times the service are. Well, I see it right here on the back. It's, yep, those are the times. You, you have a, yeah, we got a Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Sunday night, 6 p.m. That's coming up here in an hour or two. Well, you're going to see me soon. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait. This is what the whole world needs. This battle that's going on in Israel right now wouldn't even happen if we were searching this book right. Truth of the matter is, if Israel had been seeking this book right, searching this book right, we wouldn't even be here. It's over, been long done a long time ago. We certainly wouldn't be in the situation we're in. I want to challenge, I want to encourage you. Spend more time with God and His Word. Not just sitting down and, and, and making your eyes pass over it. I'm talking about Searching it out. God, what about this? God, what about that? What do you say about this? And what do you know about that? There's more science in that book right there than all the scientists in this world know or think they know. Father, I want to thank you for the day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this opportunity. And I pray that through this time together tonight, we might be challenged and encouraged and we might see the need and even be inspired and have a desire to search for knowledge, understanding, and wisdom from your word, that we might become compassionate about it and we might, that our ears might be tweaked and we might lean in and desire it from our heart. Father, we ask for your blessing. We ask for your help tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.